Right, hello, welcome back to another video. Uh, today we're going to be talking a little bit about compression settings and channel packing uh, and how we can kind of like try different approaches to our materials and see what advantages and disadvantages that might give us. Um, so this all started from a question that was asked on Facebook asking if anybody was using the, the spare channel in the normal map to do um, store any data. So before we get on to what that means, I want to talk a little bit about basic compression. So here we have just an RGB texture. Um, it has been imported as a TGA uh, and then in in the engine in Unreal it's been converted into a DXT1 and you can see here in the compression settings um, that's the default when you import it it's going to pick that up so what is DXT compression so if we head on over to the internet um, not going to go too technical in here it's good to have a basic understanding but um, we're not going to be worry about the math side of it so much. Um, so the way DXT compression works is it takes a block of 4x4 pixels, breaks the whole image down to these blocks of 4x4, and then for this 4x4 it stores the um, the two extremes. So in here it would be the, the reddish red and this sort of dark colour here, uh, and then for the colours in between it uses just a linear interpolate between those two extremes. So um, you can see here on this big uh, blown up scale uh, the compression is reducing a lot of that color information so we're just getting these three four bands rather than the full 16 colors we had before um, and here with the lots of colors um, this is very extreme you wouldn't really get this much color variation in a, a 4 by 4 block um, it's taking the two extremes and it's really averaging that out so this is what we call compression artifacts um, the compression process has uh, created some errors within the, the, the texture compression but it's made everything a lot smaller so um, you get a compression ra compression ratio of about one to eight, so the, the DXT is about eight times smaller um, than uh, than the than the TGA was before. Um, it's 16 bits of, of information, so um, that means there's a compression ratio of five six five. What that means is the red and blue channels have five bits of information, and the green has one more in sixth, uh, or one more as a sixth. Um, interesting to know we'll we'll kind of like use that where we can I mean the difference between five and six isn't massive but it does exist um, the human eye can see more greens than anything else so it makes sense that we give the green channel the the extra bit of information um, and obviously 16 divided by 3 doesn't go very nicely so that extra sort of floating um, kind of extra bit uh, is given to the to the green channel um, so what does that all mean in terms of unreal well so the original question was talking about normal maps um, here we have a normal map that's been imported and it's obviously picked up the compression settings of normal map and it's using a format called BC5. Um, if we change this back to the default compression you'll see there's actually data in the blue channel. So if I go here, this blue channel I've written test across it um, but if we use the actual normal map compression we lose that information. So what's happening here? Well, why is that? Well, so a normal map each pixel, each RGB value of the pixel, is encoding a unit vector. So we can use a little bit of maths. Um, we know that its length of one, that vector is a triangle, so we can use Pythagoras' theorem and say, if we've got the red and the green data, we can do x squared plus y squared equals uh, z squared, um, and we can calculate that. And we can actually do that in the material. So um, if I just jump across to one of my materials, there is a, a function, um, there's derive normal z, um, and there's also a new derived normal z function. So this is actually the math that's happening. And you can see here that x squared plus y squared um, and z squared equals 1. Um, don't worry too much about the maths. But what it means is we can take our, our normal map. If I take the values in here, append, not append many, but append vector. Append the red and green channels together and then do a derive normal z, it will recalculate that z value for us, so recalculate the normal map based on the two input vectors, uh, two input input channels, uh, and that's what's happening here. So the BC5 format, um, it only it compresses the red and green channels, it discards the blue that you've imported, um, and then rebuilds that in the shader here, um, which means you get eight bits of um, information per channel, eight for the red, eight for the green, and you get a better quality normal. So if I go in here, zoom right in, you can see the BC5 compression, if I then change that to default it's going a bit blurry, not sure how well the camera is going to pick that up, um, but you can definitely see a big difference in quality, and obviously the normal map is very important for the overall visual quality you, you want that to be very crisp um, 
and so that's why this uh, this format's been developed, this PC5, um, to give you that as much information as possible. So um, we definitely can use extra channels uh, or channel packing data where it's necessary, but for a normal map, um, that third channel that um, potentially could be used in theory has actually already been discarded um, in favour of higher quality normals overall. So. Um, Hope that makes sense. Um, just going to have a look here at some uh, various materials that, that I've made. So this is some different options, um, basically all to do the same thing. I mean, they're all the same uh, identical wall, but but just different ways of of packing that data together. Um, let's delete these. So this is the sort of standard material setup that uh, that I would use. Um, obviously, your RGB color, uh, base color in there. This is what I've called an ARH. So ambient occlusion, roughness, and then a height map which I've plugged into displacement. We're not using displacement this material, but it's nice to have a height map if you wanted to do any dirt blending, um, water running down the bricks, that kind of thing. And notice the roughness is in the green channel. Again, it has that extra channel bit of data. So having your roughness there. Roughness is also really important for your material, probably more so than the ambient or height map. Um, but you need to make those decisions. Uh, now you know there's an extra bit of data here. Which part of the material do you want to give that? Uh, and then obviously our normal map apply it as normal. Um, here two channels or two textures packed together so if we were really trying to be um, efficient trying to pack as much data together as possible I, I've taken the uh, the normal information the red and the green channels and I've just split them into my texture I take this off so it's the red and the green channel data from a normal map and I've split them into the red and the blue so again giving the roughness the most information in the green and if we're using the normal maps in 5 and 5 that makes more sense um, to me at least than using 1 as a 5 and 1 as a 6 in terms of the compression settings for that um, and you can see one thing well, one thing to note if you're going to try and do this kind of rebuilding your normals in your material um, the values in a normal map when they've been uncompressed uh, go from minus 1 to one, not just from zero to one. Um, normally, the normal map compression settings BC5, all this takes into account, does it all for you. It's nice and easy, and real being helpful when you're doing the basics. But if you are making it uh, a bit different, we need to have this these constant bias. So, just kind of taking that alpha value. Oops, that's the wrong material. Which one is it? Is it the right material? No, it is the wrong material. Nope, this one here. Sorry. Uh, taking that that red and, and blue values. So that's the red and green channels of the normal map. And we're just kind of unbiased or unpacking them so that their range goes from minus one to one, append them together, and then rederive uh, normal Z. So um, you can see we're building that normal map up again. Um, still have the roughness. Uh, we've lost the ambient occlusion and the height map data, um, but we now have a much sort of smaller uh, shader. We're only using two texture calls, um, and we'll have a look at the size on disk later. Um, this does have some loss of quality. If I go into the visualization for this and look at the world normal get quite close in and the two together so again not sure how well that's holding up but it's the same thing we were seeing before so here's the um, the nice compression on this side uh, this is the standard BC5 here we've split those two channels up and then rebuilt the third channel um, and we're going to get some lossy compression artifacts in that um, Moving on to other ways we could do this. This is uh, two, tex two textures with a packed alpha. So alpha is a bit of an interesting one. So if you add an alpha channel to an RGB um, texture, it doesn't just uh, add the same kind of little bit. It doesn't make it 25% bigger. It makes it 50% bigger. So the alpha is compressed, compressed completely separately from the RGB. So you don't get any bleed between your kind of RGB and alpha compression artifacts, um, but it does double the size. So here I've used the same kind of principle. Uh, again, ambient occlusion, roughness, and height map in my RGB of this texture here. And then I've taken the two channels of my, um, my normal map, my red and my green, um, and packed them into the alphas. So these are a bit bigger, a bit more expensive, um, but much higher quality. So if I go in and compare these, back again to my world normal visualizer this is now the two together so there's still some errors happening here that we didn't get here to do with the way things have been sort of recombined and, and packed and stuff but the actual quality of the normals is much higher here 
than it was over here. So this is now the packed into the alphas, and this is then that um, packed using the the normal DXT compression. Um, fourth one or last one here, um, taking the roughness value. Uh, again, the more important part of the shader, um, and just packing it in with the RGB. So here, um, still using just a basic normal map, and packing the alpha in there. So it's still back down to two uh, draw calls, um, and there's none of the extra math happening here. It's all relatively simple maths. If we compared our instruction counts in a minute, you'll see that they're all basically around this 126, 128 kind of range. We're not adding a huge amount of uh, shader cost in doing these things. Um, but this would be one way of reducing your draw calls down to two, um, but at some cost to your to your memory footprint. So, um, speaking of memory footprint, if we go to our scene again, so there's if I just save it all first. Uh, there's a really nice tool in Unreal. If you right-click on your your level, um, you've got what's called a size map. And if I just change that to be uh, memory size, um, this is showing you the size of all the different assets being used. Um, one thing to note um, here, I've, I've duplicated my brick wall textures, so these two are actually complete copies of each other, same here with my, my normals. Um, once something's loaded in onto the size map it won't show you it again, so if I was to reuse the same texture twice it wouldn't show me these uh, sort of like as the size that they really are. So, um, But you can see here the three materials we've got that have the nice normals um, are actually all basically the same size. So there's 11.3, 11.2, 11.3. Um, this one, that sort of three textures one, is giving you um, three draw calls, but it's also giving you extra information. So there's the um, ambient occlusion in here and the height map. Um, this one, the two textures packed, that's the one with the uh, compression artifacts. Um, and it is a smaller thing on disk, so depending on what you're trying to do, um, if your bottleneck really is that size on disk, um, then this would p potentially give you a higher, um, a lower size on disk if that was the bottleneck. Um, alternatively, you can always make the texture smaller, so having a smaller, higher quality map uh, and tiling it more times um, may give you sort of a, a better result. So, um, in conclusion, I mean, is there a better way of doing these things? It all depends on what your sort of like personal uh, or per your project's uh, needs are. Um, there's other considerations to this as well. So if you remake every material with a slightly different set of channel packed data, um, then you're going to have to remake lots of materials. And the, the overheads of keeping lots of different material setups going all at once um, may sort of outweigh the costs, benefits. Um, and if we do just compare these sort of material instruction counts, looking at them in the shader complexity view, very little difference, basically none at all. Um, and if I just open these four materials up, so we're talking 128 instructions, um, 129, 127, 126. So um, very, very minimal difference in these, um, and also sort of difference in, in visual quality you're getting there. So um, hope that helps. Um, this doesn't really kind of like, there's not some super bit of knowledge in here that's going to revolutionize your workflow. To be honest, the, the default workflow is the default for, for a reason. Um, you get lots of flexibility um, and there's not huge amounts of cost savings available to you there. But but it is quite interesting, I think, to be able to re-derive your normals. Um, definitely use this kind of functionality to build my own normals in sort of custom shaders. We're doing call effect stuff. So it's good to know um, sort of how that works. Um, and yeah, so just kind of maybe thinking about the next time you start a new project, how exactly you're going to set up your material sort of texture uh, pipeline um, and sort of the, the knock-on effects to that. So hope that's been interesting and informative. Uh, as always, questions, comments, etc. let me know. Um, big shout out to uh, my patrons. Um, people have started following me. It's been really good. Um, it's amazing to, to get some support to, to keep doing this. I really enjoy doing it. Uh, I want to keep that up. So it'd um, be great if you could kind of add a follow. Um, like all that that stuff um, and uh, yeah I'll see you all next time